Hi, let's just skip the formalities and get down to business. Today, I'm going to give you the ultimate guide to drum roll please, boys. I asked you guys to ask me questions on my Instagram and you guys clearly did not hold back. So let's get started. All right, the hair is going back. We are getting down to business. I was gonna start off with some warm up questions, but there was just none of that. We're just gonna take a dive into the deep end. When are they flirting and when do they think we're flirting? Let me break this down for you. Just because a boy is being mean to you does not mean he likes you. You're not in elementary school. I'm assuming. If a boy is actually mean to you, especially if you're in high school or college, they might just be an ass. That's the case a lot of times. I think you can tell when a guy's flirting when he makes time for you because that seems to be a really hard thing for most guys to do. It can be hard to read them sometimes. I feel like every guy shows interest differently, but I would say they're planning dates, they're excited to hang out with you, they're making the first move. But to answer the second question, when do they think we're flirting? A lot of people, like for me, I have what's classified as a flirty personality, but I'm just nice. People mistaken that a lot for being flirty. I have no idea what's going through a boy's mind, so I can't help you with that question. Is it okay to date your friend's ex? Oh, this is dangerous ground. From my experience and from what you see in the movies, it's just kind of girl code to not date your friend's ex. I guess it depends for every situation. I think the most important thing is talking to your friend and making sure they're okay with it. And if they're clearly not, I think having girl friendships are more important than having a boyfriend. That can just be such a sticky situation. I would just say be honest and open with your friend because you don't want to lose a friend over a boy. I feel like that's just so dumb. Personally, I never had that problem because me and my friends have never had the same taste in dudes at all. So we were safe there, but I've watched far too many movies to know that it just this never ends well when you go behind a friend's back and you start dating their boyfriend and it just gets really messy. So I would just say be open with your communication. Why are they so weird and gross and inappropriate sometimes? Like WTF. I wish I could answer that for you. I just, I, I have no idea. I have no answer. Maybe it's just in their DNA. Most boys grow out of that. And also I learned that boys can be really different when they're with their friends versus when they're just with you. So keep that in mind. How do you know when you're ready for a relationship? I feel like when you know, you know. Most of you guys who've watched my videos for a while knew that I complained about being single for the longest time. I just am single. Being single was my brand for a second there. I think you'll just know when you're ready and you'll find the right person, I don't think it's something you should rush into because for most people like me, I get very attached very easily. I feel like to be in a good and healthy relationship, you really have to be mature and ready for that person. Speaking from experience, if you're gonna get mad that he's gonna hang out with his friends, even though he's hung out with you the past 26 days in a row and you get really mad, you might not be emotionally ready. And I've learned this the hard way. Is it weird to be older and have no experience? When is too old to not have had your first kiss or boyfriend? There is no set age of when you need to have your first kiss by. Like you need to have your first kiss by the time you're 18 or else you're weird. No, it doesn't work like that. I know so many people who've never kissed a boy and it's really just not a big deal. It's only as big of a deal as you make it. Sometimes it feels like everyone around you is in relationships and stuff and then it can get really hard when you're like the only friend in your friend group who doesn't have a boyfriend. I promise it's worth the wait because whoever you're meant to be with, it'll just all make sense and click together and it won't even matter that you were single for however many years. I was single for 19 years. Is it bad if I DM the guy on Instagram first? And how do I do that? If you wanna DM someone first, do it. Who knows, you could shoot your shot and then you might get married someday. I feel like sometimes guys like when girls make the first move because sometimes guys can be just as nervous to make the first move as girls. Plus that shows confidence and I feel like guys like when a girl's confident. How to trust someone if they've given you reasons not to in the past. I feel like that can be really hard because then you'll just overthink everything. You'll never know if they're lying or they're just not being truthful. But I think the only way to know if you can trust someone is to trust them and see what happens, which can be really scary. But the only way someone can earn your trust is if they prove that they can be trusted. How do you deal with being jealous if that's just how you are naturally? <laughs> Literally, I feel that. Don't mow your lawn right now. I have a naturally jealous personality too. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be over a girl. Once you get to that point in the relationship, your partner will know you. They'll probably know how you get. So I think it's important to communicate how you feel. That way they can kind of help you through it, give you reassurance. If you need reassurance, ask for it. I feel like a lot of people talk about how if a boy isn't giving you reassurance, then don't beg for it. But sometimes boys are just clueless, so you kind of have to tell them what you want. I see so many tweets that get so much attention and it's like, if a boy's not treating you right, don't tell him how to treat you. He should just know how to do it himself. But honestly, sometimes you gotta train boys. It's like having a little puppy. They don't know better sometimes. So you gotta train it. And that's advice that my mom has given me and that she's given my sister. I don't know if she's gonna make me edit this part out. Every whatever anniversary or every 
special holiday like Valentine's Day, you have to get me flowers. That's just how it works. And he literally has a note on his iPhone of what special occasions need flowers, what special occasions need cards. Sometimes you gotta tell a boy how to treat you. And then if he doesn't treat you, but you made it clear how you wanna be treated, I feel like that's when that becomes a red flag. I don't know what to say on the first date. What do I do? I got so many questions about what to talk about when you're first getting to know someone or on a first date. So here are my five conversation starters that will most likely not end in awkwardness. Question one. What's your favorite thing to do? And then you can answer and you can kind of talk about it. You can talk about your favorite thing to do. Maybe it's something you guys will have in common. Easy, boom. Question two, did you play any sports as a kid? And if he says no, I've got nothing for you. Question three, ask him or her the top three places they want to travel to. I feel like most people have a bucket list of where they want to travel to, so I feel like that could spark a really cool conversation. Question four, getting a little deep here, ask them what they want to be when they get older. I feel like that's a conversation that definitely would go into other conversations, like how they plan to get there, or if that's too serious, just ask them what their favorite ice cream flavor is. And topic number five, ask them who their favorite YouTuber is, and then they'll answer, and then they'll ask you who your favorite YouTuber is, I'm just kidding, kinda. Is it bad to be 15 and have never had a serious relationship? When I was 15, I was in a serious relationship with Justin Bieber, so it's not bad no matter if you're 15, 16, 17, 25. A lot of people don't. You can't just expect to meet your high school sweetheart because a lot of times that's not what happens. That kind of leads into another piece of advice, which is don't expect to find your long-term soulmate or the person you're gonna marry in high school. I don't know if you guys noticed, but most boys in high school, there's just not the greatest selection. Someone is out there for you, but most likely it's not gonna be in high school because this is how big the selection is in high school. Not much, but as you go through life, I feel like once you get out of high school and you start doing things that you love and are interested in, you'll also find someone who has similar interests to you. What do you do when you feel like your boyfriend is keeping something from you? Well, you certainly don't go through their phone. That never turns out well. Communication is key, and I feel like this applies to so many questions. You just have to be open and honest. It can be really scary to confront someone, but it doesn't have to be such a serious thing. You guys could be out on a lunch date or something and be like, hey, I actually really wanted to talk to you about something that's been on my mind. You don't wanna be secretive. You don't wanna try and hack their phone and see who they're texting and stuff. That's just so unhealthy. Did you get anxious having your first kiss with your current boyfriend? Ah, yes, literally. I remember, I don't know if you can get mad at me for talking about this. We hadn't kissed yet. I was dropping him off at his house or maybe he was dropping me off at my house. I don't remember, but he tried to lean in for a kiss and he was like, can I have a kiss? And I was like, huh, you can wait for the next date. So I bought myself time, but then by the time the second date came, I was like, please don't remember. Do not let this be the only thing you have good memory for. But of course it was. So of course he reminded me and then it just kind of happened. And it was really nice. I was very nervous going into it because anytime you kiss someone who you never kissed before, it's just like your pits start sweating, your heart starts pounding and you feel like you're gonna throw up sometimes. Enjoy it, ladies and gentlemen. Be comfortable with awkwardness. Easier said than done. How to talk to boys. Well, that's very broad. All right, insert boy here. Hey, be my boyfriend. I wish I was that ballsy. I would say to talk to a boy, find something you have in common with him, whether it's a class, a teacher, a hobby, that's usually a good conversation starter. How do you deal with your ex making stuff up about you and talking bad about you? That happens so often, and I feel like that's just a sign that they most likely clearly are not over you and are sad that they lost you, or they're just not happy with themselves that they feel the need to talk about you. In those situations, if your ex is talking bad about you, I think it's just important to be the bigger person. It's like when any person is talking bad about you, whether it's an ex-best friend or an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend, you just have to rise above and be the bigger person because nothing good is gonna come from both of you being at a war with each other, which is just gonna get bigger and bigger. So I feel like if you ignore it and don't give attention to it, it won't get any bigger because most likely they're just seeking your attention. How to get over a heartbreak from a serious relationship. There's no real recipe, which kind of sucks. And the thing is, you don't even have to be in a serious relationship to feel heartbreak. Sometimes the guy you didn't even date can break your heart. But in general, I feel like heartbreak just takes time. Spend time with people who really care about you, whether that's family, or friends, immerse yourself in things that make you happy. Maybe it's a hobby that you never wanted to start because you were putting so much time into your relationship that you were forgetting to put time into yourself. So do things for yourself. Do not read old texts, look at old pictures. That's literally just gonna make it worse. It's important to acknowledge what you're feeling. So maybe give yourself two or three days 
to just cry, be sad, lay in your bed, do nothing. And then after that third day, you just have to realize everything happens for a reason. Where you are right now is where you're meant to be. Focus on yourself. I know it can be really hard. I promise you'll get through it. Reach out to someone who you can talk to. I think it'd be awesome if in the comments, if you're going through something, maybe share your story or whatever you feel comfortable with and people can comment back and we can just all comment to each other and help each other out. I'm scared to bring my boyfriend home to my parents. <laughs> I'm about to tell you the story of how I introduced Connor to my parents. Hopefully it inspires you if you are hiding your boyfriend or girlfriend from your parents. Everyone's different. I'm pretty open with my parents about stuff, but I've never been the type of person to be super open where it's like, hey, this is my boyfriend. Like the first day I meet him. Was he even my boyfriend yet? I think we were still talking. We weren't even really dating yet because he hadn't asked me out yet. I forget what triggered it, but we were driving home from dinner and I think my mom texted me and she was like, you know, you're spending a lot of time with this boy and we haven't really met him. We want to know who you're hanging out with. And I wanted to keep hanging out with him. So I was like, oh God, is this really about to happen? Keep in mind, my mom, my dad, my sister, and her boyfriend are over. So it's a full house. And I didn't even tell them that I was bringing him over. Connor's the type to get very nervous over this type of stuff. So we were passing where his cutoff is to go to his house. And I just keep zooming forward. And he was like, where are you going? What are you doing? And I was like, I'm taking you to meet my parents. I was nervous. I was sweating. We pull up to my house. We don't get out of the car for five minutes. Connor's straight up freaking out. And I was like, you know, we just gotta do it. So I opened the garage door, I opened the door without even preparing Connor for absolutely anything. I was just like, here he is. In the words of Nike, with that type of stuff, you gotta just do it. Because the more time you spend worrying about it, the more you're gonna psych yourself out. Just go for it. Let me know how it goes down below. Why do boys lie and say I love you or I'll never leave you when they do? Queen went off. Why do they do that? If you're a boy watching this, why do you guys do that? Literally boys just throw around I love you like it means nothing. I think a good rule to follow is that you'll believe it when you see it because anyone can just say I love you or I'll never leave you. But actions really do speak a lot louder than words. So if he's not making time for you, he doesn't take your feelings into consideration, just be conscious of those types of things. I got a lot of questions about can I even say that word without getting demonetized? Being intimate with someone, I got so many questions about it. So to kind of sum up all of your questions in one answer, my number one rule is don't do anything you don't wanna do. A person needs to be really emotionally stable and mature because it can be heartbreaking if it's someone you're not emotionally ready for and it just comes with a lot of responsibilities. For most girls, they usually want a really big commitment after and boys usually sometimes aren't the same. There are people who choose to wait and there are people who don't. Truly everyone is different and has their own views and opinions on it. I am not here to judge or tell you what to do. I'm just someone on the internet, you know? Definitely talk to someone older and wiser, someone that you trust. It can be your mom, an older sibling, a trusted friend, an aunt. It's super important to be safe and I can only say so much because I don't know you personally, but that's my advice. All the boys at my school are way shorter than me. Sis, I dated a 5'3 boy when I was in eighth grade and I was 5'8. Boys sprout so much later. Why? I promise once you finish high school or go to college or start your adult life that you'll find people who are taller. There are tall men out there, I promise. Little word out there to my shorter girls, love you, but stop taking guys who are six feet because the girls who are tall have no one. Don't feel too attacked. I'm starting to get bored of my relationship. This can be kind of difficult, especially if you've been with a person for a very long time, like one, two, three, four, five years, however long it is. There's a difference between getting bored of the relationship and getting bored of the person because you might still be in love with the person and love them, but you're just bored. And that happens because sometimes in relationships you settle, go to a new restaurant, try new food together, go on a new adventure, try an escape room, go, Nah, don't go bungee jumping, that's kind of scary. Well, you, uh, up to you. Do a new adventure, try something new, go on a cute little picnic. I think just spice up the relationship, find something new that you love about it. How to not have exceptionally high expectations for a boyfriend. Keep your expectations. There are so many questions. I think a really big part about dating is not losing who you are as an individual because I know so many people when they get into relationships, they kind of lose themselves. Maybe they cut off friends or they stop doing things for themselves and their whole life revolves around the relationship and they don't even know who they are as an individual. They're just a couple. In relationships, you really still need to be true to yourself and who you are and be your own entity. I understand the whole thing like, oh, he's my other half, she's my other half, but I don't think it has to be like that. I think you can be two whole people and still be together. I think I'm gonna end the video here. Comment down below any advice that you're seeking or that you wanna give. Whether you're looking for advice or you're looking to give advice, I think the comments would be a really good place to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I haven't done a sit down video in a while, so this was a little weird. Not weird, just weird because it's so hot in here. I'm wearing this really big sweater and my thighs are sweating on my chair, so. Love that. See you next time.